I might be a bit late to the party, but since there's been no closure on the latest government anecdote, it's still worth talking about. I am, of course, talking about the now infamous bike shed at Leinster House. Well, I say shed, but a shed has four walls and a roof and is actually capable of keeping its contents dry. This yoke is nothing more than an overpriced, trumped-up bus shelter, and a fairly shite one at that, regardless of the price. I mean, just look at the absolute state of it. It apparently fits 36 bikes, yet at least 6 of them aren't even under the pathetic attempt at a shelter. But it's the price tag, and not the pathetic attempt at a shelter, that has caused so much consternation and outrage from the public. 336,000 euro for that. Christ on a bike. 336,000 euro. That's 3 grand more than the median price of a home in Ireland last year for f- sake. And house prices are f***ing ridiculous. €336,000 when a similar bike shed, albeit one without a canopy, was built at Farmley House and was built for only €28,000. So either we've got the world's most expensive canopy and bike shelter to go along with the world's most expensive hospital, or there's some absolute bullshit at play here. A look at the breakdown of costs supplied by the Office of Public Works showed the vast majority of that sum was spent on the actual construction and installation of this shelter. It just beggars belief. The response from our ministers was nothing short of embarrassing, all singing from the same hymn sheet about how crazy the price is, while acting outraged and flabbergasted that something like this could happen, and telling us how right we all are to be so angry. But this is the sort of thing that rightly uh, angers and annoys people, and it angers and annoys me as well. Uh, because yes, workplaces should provide somewhere to park the bike for grand. But they shouldn't do it in a manner that is lavish or extortion um, or extortion in relation to others. Oh gee, thanks for the f- permission, Simon? Does Harris in particular honestly set out to try to be as patronising and as smug as possible, or is it just a gift? In my humble opinion, the only reason for the outrage from those in power is because the whole thing came to light in the first place. Either way, the rest of the reaction was nothing but transparent bluster about getting to the bottom of it. I did a video recently where I covered some of the latest sound bites from Antishuk soundbite Simon Harris, and one of them was was how he wanted to stop the pass the parcel approach in government. Yeah, that lasted all of 11 days. 11 days before he says he doesn't want to personalise the investigation into the bike shed to any individual who may be responsible. Oh, for f- sake. Did we honestly expect anything more? Sure, on Tarnish, the Michal Martin gave soundbite Simon a run for his money in the smug and patronising stakes when he dismissed a valid question from Grip Media's Ben Scallon, who asked if he couldn't just make a phone call and see whose name is on the purchase order. With a smug and snarky, it might seem relatively straightforward to you, but it's important to go through it properly. Which no doubt means more taxpayer money wasted on investigations into something that should be a very simple thing to find out where lessons will no doubt be learned. Now don't get me wrong, the whole process does actually need to be looked at because we need to know why such an exorbitant price was agreed to and what other companies were offering in comparison, but first and foremost find out who signed off on the bloody thing and hold them accountable. It's a basic first step that shouldn't cost the taxpayer any more money. So who are they protecting? Because it certainly seems to me that they're closing ranks. And so the question becomes why? Is it simply that they don't want to look any further because they just want to bury the embarrassment and, in their view, hopefully move on quickly so the scandal doesn't stick? Or is there something much deeper going on here? I think most taxpayers would like to know what company, and indeed whose company, was awarded this tender and why. There is certainly much speculation about that topic online, and I think most of us would like to see an answer set in stone. Much like with the builders of the children's hospital, BAM, we have a right to know what builders are squandering wondering our money. Was the tendering process all above board? Or are the usual Irish suspicions of favouritism and favours at play? I mean, we've all seen enough evidence of cronyism throughout the years that we wouldn't be the least bit surprised to find that there was a quid pro quo at play here. And if that is true, it amounts to theft of public money.
money in my mind and should be investigated to the fullest extent of the law, for once. Now, some commenters online have offered up an alternative possible explanation for the ridiculous cost involved, namely that the money wasn't all just spent on the bike shed, and in fact the majority was spent on revamping the car park, that perhaps the active travel budget was burning a hole in the OPW's pocket, and they had a car park that needed a facelift, and the bike shelter was just a handy cover for the expense. This explanation is definitely plausible, not probable in my view, but plausible. A big mark against this theory, however, is that firstly the breakdown of cost specifically only lists the bike shelter, and secondly, if it was true, the government would surely have already jumped on this explanation, as at least it shows genuine work being done for that price, and it would make it easier for them to downplay. And yeah, sure, they probably would like to avoid having to explain why one budget is being raided for something else, and they'd like to avoid comparisons to another situation where public funds were used far more broadly, but ultimately they clearly don't give a shite about where that 19 million euro went, so why would they feel shame over this? Nah, it's too simple an explanation because this government feels no shame or embarrassment over anything, and they're cocky enough to believe that they brazen it out. And of course we have the new details, otherwise known as excuses, revealed through internal records from the Oroctus that make no mention of a car park being done up, but do waffle about how there were so many delays, and how somehow this goes some way to explaining the cost. Incidentally, one of the delays mentioned was how they had to work around when the doll is sitting, which, let's be real here, is a delay that should have been factored in from the get-go, and the fact that it wasn't amounts to nothing more than bad planning and mismanagement. The rest of the RTE article detailing the excuses from those internal records are just that, excuses, and none in any way, shape or form explain away the exorbitant cost, and indeed simply add to the evidence that this project was mismanaged and wasteful from the off, much in the same way as our most expensive hospital in the world, the National Children's Hospital is. The records explain nothing, and in my view are nothing more than lame excuses that no doubt our government will hope will be swallowed by enough people for this whole debacle to blow over. And of course the records neglect to offer any information of substance that the people want, like who signed off on the works. Despite Antonish and Michal Martin's snarky comments, this should not be difficult to find out, it should not be like pulling teeth. And yet here we are, only in my view, because of the closing of ranks to keep that truth hidden, and I'll believe that until it's proven otherwise. We have heard nothing of substance from the minister whose department oversees the Office of Public Works, Pascal Donoghue, nor from his Minister of State at the time of this nonsense being signed off, Patrick O'Donovan. Well, O'Donovan did admit that he was clueless about it all, as if that somehow makes it all okay. He said that ministers don't sign off on an expenditure within the OPW any more than they do in other government departments. So what the f*** does he and his successor, Kieran O'Donnell, actually do to earn a salary of at least €157,899 a year? Incidentally, Minister for Public Expenditure Pascal Donoghue earns at least €204,571, and he hasn't a f***ing clue how it costs that much either. This is yet another snapshot, a microcosm that encapsulates everything wrong with how public funds are spent. How many times do we have to hear this story? in its ever-changing forms before we say enough is enough. How in God's name are Fine Gael up in the bloody polls when this sort of wasteful public expenditure with f**k all to show for it is a permanent fixture of their time in government? We will probably never find out the full story, but as I keep saying, that doesn't mean that we can't bring the accountability that is so sorely lacking from government benches when the time comes for an election. We need to send a clear message that the impunity with which they operate is over. Not a single vote or preference should be given to these absolute chancers and wasters. Not a single solitary vote. Hold them accountable at the ballot box because God knows they won't bring a shred of accountability upon themselves. Do they honestly deserve those salaries for wasting our money while so many are struggling to make ends meet? Yeah, didn't think so. So what do you think about it all? Do you think there'll be a reasonable explanation for why such a shite bike shelter costs so much? Do you think it'll all be above board? Or do you, like 
myself and many others, think that some pockets were lined along the way and that this is just another outrageous example of the wasting of public funds which has become a staple of Fine Gael's time in government. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of new content. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or a super thanks, which is greatly appreciated. And a huge thank you to those of you that already have. You can also follow me on Twitter. Until next time, Slonga Fool.